some trainers are reaching close to 9 million views on YouTube to give you tips on how to correct rounded shoulders. Today, I want to talk about the link between rounded shoulders and your foot posture. Now, in all of the videos and the research that I've made online, one of the things that I was disappointed in not finding is the link between the brain and the muscle. The most conventional way to look at rounded shoulders from what I could find out there is the assumption that muscles are tight and others are too weak to bring the shoulders back. Now, although this reality is true when we're looking at someone that has rounded shoulders, it doesn't take into account the underlying reason. It's actually looking at the problem. The problem is the fact that the pecs may be too tight, that the back may be too weak, but it is not the cause. So one of the main things or mistakes, I should say, that is being done in the fitness industry is that the symptom then becomes the problem. And then we start to create a system around that symptom that is considered to be a problem. And that is a great misconception in my opinion. So the link between rounded shoulders and your feet is what we're going to be discussing this uh, Sunday afternoon. I hope that you guys are having a great time wherever you're at. And uh, in order to understand grasp this concept as best as you can, I want to give you a visual of how your brain actually processes sensory input. So the number one thing to grow your brain is proprioception. Proprioception may seem like a fancy word. What proprioception simply means is that your brain needs to feel where your body is in space. So when we're talking about the foot solely looking at the foot, we are talking about muscles and joints and ligaments, all of which send sensory input to your brain. Your brain then picks up on this information, analyzes the information and sends down a motor command for you to make. Now, here's the thing. If the weight bearing surfaces on your feet is asymmetrical, if they're uneven, and I've done previous videos about this, so about how you can actually test your foot posture and I'll post them in the description below. You can also see them on my YouTube, YouTube channel at posture pro, but if you've determined that you have an asymmetry of foot posture, then chances are that your foot is affecting the mechanics of your knee of your hip and of your entire spinal column. So in essence, what I am suggesting is that the position of your foot can actually influence the position of your spine and can certainly affect or create the illusion of having rounded shoulders. So going back to proprioception, you see how the foot is shown here on, on this, uh, on this image on your screen. And the foot again, represents the skin, the muscles and the joint, that entire complex, uh, is actually considered to be proprioception, but there's also the way that your eyes are tracking the environment and your inner ear. We're really not going to get into that at this, uh, in uh, today's talk, but we've done previous videos on this as well. And this is certainly what we teach in the, in the posture pro method. But in the case of your foot, if there's an asymmetry of, of, uh, of foot posture, then your brain certainly knows this. Here's the thing. You're, you don't, you are actually not aware that this is happening unless you take a close, close look at your feet, unless you look at your shoes, unless you analyze, uh, your own foot posture or so do a one legged stance and feel, you know, how the weight bearing surfaces are, are feeling the sensation that you're getting on the left foot and the right foot. And the thing is, is what you want to look for is symmetry. So what does this have to do with rounded shoulders? How can your foot possibly affect the position of your spine? Well, you can actually test this yourself while you're listening to this video. If you actually stand up and look straight ahead and, uh, let your body weight fall as evenly as you can on your feet. And then if you uh, gently and slowly lift one leg up by flexing your hip anywhere between 20 to 30 degrees, 
And then you kind of feel the movement that your left foot is doing and compare that movement to your right. 72% of the time we'll find that the movement is opposite to one another. However, there are incidences where the movement is the same with a dash of asymmetry. And what I mean by that is a pronated foot, a collapsing of the midfoot, which is the midfoot moving inwards, will create an internal rotation of the tibia, an internal rotation of the femur, and a posterior comp compression on the acetabulum, which will bring your pelvis forward and which will rotate your shoulders forward. Now, don't confuse rounded shoulders with a forward head posture, although when we do look at someone who has a, an advanced rounded shoulders and who has lived with this condition for, uh, for many years, you may also see the forward head posture along with the rounded shoulders. So the, uh, the main thing to retain uh, or the main problem is that most fitness trainers and gurus out there are really looking to treat a muscle imbalance. Uh, they're looking at this from a muscle perspective, not to say that this is incorrect, but it actually is fairly incomplete. Because as we've said, the brain really is the descending pathways from the brain are the ones that are going to influence muscle tone. So the solution that we propose is to incorporate with your proprioceptive rehabilitation exercises, a permanent foot correction. And this, and we're not referring to wearing orthotics or arch support. Because the skin of the foot is so rich in these sensory receptors and your brain really does use this information to, uh, to stabilize your body in space. And uh, there is a powerful sensory connection between your feet and your brain. As a matter of fact, the information from the skin of the foot makes it to your sensory cortex. And then your sensory cortex will project onto the, those motor tracks for you to actually move as best as you can. So if the weight bearing surfaces on your feet is not the same, if it's just asymmetrical, your brain knows and the tension in your muscle will be asymmetrical. So we know that when we stimulate the foot, we actually have an effect on those motor tracks, those descending motor tracks that have a direct influence on extensor tone. And this, this is really important because if you have rounded shoulders, then you have poor muscle tone and you're unable to extend your back or your neck or your glutes, your posture and your sagittal plane is going to be compromised. So, um, can our feet make your future pain free? We tend to look at the problem from a bottom up approach. And it does start with the feet because we walk with our feet, unless you're walking with your hands or unless you're walking on your butt and you're not using your feet to walk. Uh, most of us do use our feet. And if our feet have been in an abnormal position, as you see on your screen here, I'd see, see the picture here on the right side of your screen. This is the beginning of a pronated foot. That is just the beginning of the foot that is starting to pronate inwards. And you could see this because there's less pressure on the lateral band. This, what, we, what you're looking at here on your screen is what we call a mixed foot. And if you'd like to learn more about a mixed foot and how gait is affected through your feet, uh, check out our gait and foot mechanics uh, webinar on our website. And we'll break that down for you in absolute detail. But for the purpose of this presentation, you can see that this is 72% of people that have bad asymmetry and weight bearing surfaces. But the pronated foot or even the flat foot, in the example of the flat foot, this entire midsection is green, it's collapsed. And in that event, then it's going to bring more likely than not the forward shoulders and the anterior pelvic tilt. So the methods that we propose is certainly what we teach in the Posture Pro method is to use the brain to have an effect on the posterior chain, to realign posture, to realign the sagittal plane, 
and then to incorporate proprioceptive exercises, uh, whether they be um, uh, jumping around in one place and activating or, or using uh, anything that is wobbly to stimulate those sensory receptors in your ankle, in your foot. Uh, we suggest using those exercises in conjunction, certainly to the uh, therapeutic and proprioceptive insoles that we use. You need to find a way to create a scenario to be able to send sensory feedback to the brain 24 seven for a minimum amount of six weeks. And the reality of it is, is that when we use rehabilitation or rehabilitation exercises, whether it be on the feet or on the body, these exercises are, are only short term. So the sensory stimulation is being processed by the brain at that point in time. But then when we go back on our feet, which we've established are imbalanced most of the time, then the sensory input from our foot is then going to make it back to our brain and our brain is going to use that input to make us move. So the solution would be for a certain period of time to change those faulty motor patterns that you have acquired over time. And you can do this by using proprioceptive insoles. They are insoles that specifically target the sensory receptors in the skin of the foot. And there's more information on that on the website on your screen. Once that has been done, these proprioceptive insoles will help you create that constant stimulation so that you can start creating neuroplasticity, changing those motor patterns, those salty motor patterns in your brain. And then you can incorporate proprioceptive exercises, strengthening exercises to start changing your foot posture on a more permanent basis. I want you to think about using the brain in comparison to, to dieting or intermittent fasting. Using the brain to correct posture in comparison to using simply muscle strengthening and stretching uh, will always give you greater results. Uh, and to compare this, to give an analogy, if you, uh, we know that using ketones as fuel is always going to be more effective for the brain as a source of energy, as opposed to actual glucose. Well, using the brain in a rehabilitation context, or even in a strengthening context is always going to give you a greater bang for your buck than it would if you just focused on the muscles and the joints. So for more information, don't forget to check out educationnalprashapro.co to check out our, uh, and you'll find the information in regards to our insoles there. And uh, happy Sunday, guys.